Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here, Premier Leather Crafters, PLC, um, down here in the Dirty Dirty uh, with another video. Uh, and this, this is an informational video. Yeah, I guess you can say it's kind of like a tutorial video. Um, earlier today I was on the Leathers Guild and uh, a question that one of the younger crafters had asked was uh, how to do the diamond or what stamp created the diamond pattern. Um, depending on the region that you're in or the area you're from, you're going to hear this pattern called different names. But the traditional name or the, the proper name is called the quilting pattern. Uh, because if you look at a quilt, my grandmother used to make quilts back in the day when she was alive. God bless her. Uh, man, them things are so heavy, man. It felt like a body was laying on top of you. But uh, that same pattern that this, the seamstress or the sewer made in the quilt is the same pattern that leather crafters copy and mimic. Now, and those are varied in size depending on the piece or the project that you're working on. I've seen that quilting pattern done on belts, I've seen them done on purses, I've seen them done on messenger bags, carrier bags, whatever, which is a beautiful pattern in print. So there's no one set size or stamp or anything like that or any general rule because you'll see those sizes and those shapes change or alter depending on the piece. So what I've done I was already working on a pair of custom flip-flops for a client down in the Tampa area. And so it made me, I'm, I'm going to put that same exact pattern on these flip-flops. Now, the first thing that you want to do, regardless of whatever piece that you're working on or pattern that you're working on, uh, first, you want to lay your main piece down first so if you're comfortable enough or if you've been drawing enough or working enough with leather crafts where you can draw your actual centerpiece onto the um, uh, the center the art onto the piece that you're working on do so if not you can always put that on transfer film or, or tracing film you can purchase that at any of the leather shops uh, uh, and draw on that just in case you don't, so you don't have to worry about errors or missteps. But because sometimes it is hard to mirror the pattern on your pieces, so and a lot of crafters aren't comfortable with that, and that's 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 okay. Um, so go ahead and put that on your tracing film or your trace your transfer paper. Oh God, man, why do I always get sleepy when I do these videos? Okay. Um, but we're going to copy, we're going to transfer that same exact pattern onto the flip-flops here. So now again, if you're not comfortable enough with putting the pattern directly onto your piece, that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to do this on regular good old copying paper. And see, and still, even still, you can see that I still draw on paper too. Hey, so it's not nothing to be ashamed or embarrassed about if you don't want to go directly onto the leather. Now, and then for the love of everything that's beautiful, do not keep this in mind. If you're drawing on leather, it's very hard to erase on leather because pencil tip will actually put an embellishment or scive a line into that into the leather and even if you erase the pencil mark that's now this gotta remember this is lead so even if you are successful enough with erasing with erasing the pencil mark you're still going to have that line scribed into the leather which I recommend again put it on paper first and then go from there so what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how we do this um, pineapple diamond quilting pattern. Now the four things you're going to need to do this pattern is a, a ruler. Still don't make fun of my pink rulers, my daughters. It's not mine. I did not buy this. This is my daughter's. 
I just refuse to buy another one because, I mean, she has one for free. Pencil. Keep your pencil. You're going to need a swivel knife as well as a cedar. Now, it doesn't matter about the cedar. It can be any size cedar. That's up strictly up to the crafter themselves. You can use a small cedar. You can use a mid-size cedar or a medium cedar. It doesn't matter. But, and you can alter this pattern various ways. So, I'm just going to show you the two main ways right now. So, you guys can know how to do this. And it's very simple. But what you're going to do, now, for, for my flip-flops, I'm going to go, I want my, my, my lines to be about a half inch apart from each other. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just start with one line. Boom. Make me one. And I'm just going to make several of these. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to space these out a half inch maybe three quarters of an inch. That'll take up more space for me on those flip-flops. Now you can alter that depending on the piece that you're working on and whether you want to put these on a belt, you still can put them on the belt. That'll be fine. And then we're just going to mark up uh, three quarters of an inch all the way out. So you guys will know exactly how to do this. And it's a very simple pattern but very beautiful when it's done. When, uh, when you put it on a piece. So because everybody on the, the gill was um, saying, you know, what is properly called and they, they was telling the, the little young crafter that it's not a stamp, but nobody really ever showed him how to do it, which led me to this. Okay, so we're just going to put four lines just so you guys can see those four lines there. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to start with another line. It doesn't matter where you put it. Uh, and then we're going to come back with the same three quarters, three quarter inch um, horizontal. Uh oh, made a boo boo. There we go. So we're going to do four vertical lines and four horizontal lines. And the reason why you do it this way is to make sure that all of your squares are even. This is the reason why you want to make sure all of your squares are even. Now, if I was doing an even larger piece, I'll probably even mark these up to a half inch or a whole inch. It just depends on the piece that you're working on. So now you guys can see that I have my squares here. Now let me show you what this is. We're just going to turn this on its axis. So let me do it this way. So if this was a box, uh, let me see. Okay, let me get a straight edge line here so I can show you guys. So if, you, if you're looking at it in this wise, uh, yeah, I may as well, well, let me show you like this. Let me get my eraser. Here it is. So, well, I think you guys are intelligent enough to see this. But there's your pattern right there. And it's the quilting pattern. Simple as that. That's all that it is. And then if I'm doing this on the leather, what I'm going to do here is, and watch this. Let me move the camera closer so you guys can see. Now, if I'm doing this on the leather, I'm going to take my cedar and I'm going to put a cedar punch on each one of these corners of my, my design on my leather. This is the quilting pattern. Simple. Just that simple. And you guys can see that. And this is all that it is. It's just simple lines, but it's a beautiful piece. Uh, I think what I'll do in the comments, I'll post a picture of another project that I did with the same exact pattern on there. But that's all to it. Now, you can get real jazzy with this. And we're going to come back with the same lines. Let's, let me, I'm, I'll tell you what I'm going to do on this one here. I'm just going to make this one a little bit more uniform. So we're going to do this in three inch lines. Three inch lines, 
same length, same length, um, but I'm going to change up my lines a little bit. Okay, so now, but what I'm going to do is uh, just to give you a variance of how three quarters, we're going to mark off three quarters, but how you can alternate this and change up the pattern and flow so you can actually do the same, the same technique, but it's going to be two different looks so you guys can see this and like I said it's, it's a wonderful thing to do once you get the, the basic principle down so now here we go I'm just gonna but instead of drawing that line all the way through I'm just gonna draw almost to the end of the line not connecting them all the way I think you guys can see that we're not gonna touch the all, all the way through just to give it a little change up and actually you can do that on all of your lines and we'll go back and erase a little bit just to give you a a different look just so you can see how to how this is done but we're not going to connect the lines we're just going to barely get almost there not quite touching but almost there I'm going to mark off another one here, three quarters, just to give us a line to shoot for. And this is the great part about this pattern is because it can be altered in so many different ways. Now, and now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come back and erase a little bit of that center line. Just erase a little bit of that center line to where we won't have a full connecting square, but almost, almost connecting. So the horizontal line is not full and the vertical line is not quite full either. Just to create a different pattern and now see and here's the great part each one of these little dots in the center of the uh, empty section is a cedar so you can stamp that cedar right there and it mimics a button now the great part about this is uh, I think you guys can see that I wish this was a live webinar so I can read your comments if you could see it but this is what we're looking for. So it's not quite going all the way to the cedar, but you can uh, put a cedar there or, or another twist or a change up to that is you can take your silver uh, or your brass rivets and put your rivets in the center of this and that'll give it a whole different contrast and look. Huh. Something simple just like that. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen, it's called the quilting pattern, and you can do this. And I think since I've done this pattern on another existing project, I think I'm going to put this one on the current the flip the flippers that I'm working on right now. So I hope that um, gave you a little bit more insight about the quilting pattern. There is not a stamp. There is not a, 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 a craft aid. You can make your own craft aid even if you choose to. So that way you don't have to keep drawing the lines over and over again. But it's really not necessary. And the other two tools that you look. So you rem just remember this. Four tools is all you need for this particular design. And you're going to need a pencil, which I don't need. Oh, there it is. A pencil, ruler, swivel knife. And a cedar. So we actually once I get my lines drawn onto my project, I'm gonna take my swivel knife and I'm gonna cut those lines in real good. And uh should you bevel now beveling will be a whole different ball of wax because you could bevel the inside 
of those squares to give it a different look. So this is the way crafters' minds think. You can always do something to change it up. So I can put one pattern on one project, then come back, put the same pattern on another project, but then bevel it, bevel the inside of the, of, of, of the, the, the lines, and that'll give it a whole different complete look. So you got two different looks to the same pattern. Or you can do complete lines crisscrossing and put your, your cedar stamp in the middle of those crisscrossing lines. Or you can almost connect the lines and still put your cedar in the middle of those, in that empty, em, empty section. And it's going to be just great. And then when you come back with your antiquing or whatever type of, of coloration, coloring you're going to do, um, it just gives it a different look. And then you can take uh, the same pattern and paint alternating squares or alternating uh, uh, diamond shapes or di alternating pineapple shapes. It's so much you can do with this. Hey, this is the Leather Cowboy. Thank you guys for chilling with me these last 16 minutes and always, always practice. Practice makes perfect. Keep at it. Keep grinding. Keep working with your tools and hey, experiment. Grab your scrap piece of paper. Start out with, I mean, a scrap. A scrap yeah. Do it on a scrap piece of paper. Start out with half-inch squares, uh, three-quarter-inch squares, one-inch squares, even two-inch squares. It just depends on the project that you're working on. But it's the same exact quilting pattern, and you can use it on multiple projects. Hey, as always, family, thank you guys for chilling with me. Thank you guys for listening to me. And, hey, happy crafting. See you guys on the other side.